You're warned about them. You accept them. You hide from them in the private mode. Or straight up clear them. The cookies. The ultimate threat to your privacy. But wait, wait, wait. Did you know that there is something just like cookies, except you cannot delete it? The ultimate tracker, making cookies look like a saint. Browser fingerprinting. I am your host, Matt Sionkowski, and today I will explain browser fingerprinting, how it impacts you, what makes it more dangerous than cookies, and why it is a problem that is still unsolved. Let's put a finger on it. Let's start with a very short refresher on what are the cookies. What are their limitations and why tracking companies even need a more powerful weapon. When you visit a website, the website can save a small text within your browser. Think of it as a text file. From now on, the browser will add this file every time you request something from the domain of that website. For example, when I navigate to the website where I store my photos, I don't have to log in every time I want to download a single photo. I log in once, I receive a cookie with my session number, and when I request a photo, my browser automatically adds my cookie to the request. Website checks if session number from my cookie is the one they store for me in their database. And if there is a match, they know that I am Matt and that I should get access to my image without a problem. This is a legitimate use, showing that cookies, like all technologies, are not evil on their own. It's just a tool, and the holder of the tool decides how it will be used. So how are cookies used for tracking? Remember when I said that cookies work only within a given domain? That is, in general, correct. And such use does not impact your privacy at all. When you act within a website, you just assume that the owners of the website know what you were doing on that website. For example, if you're logged on to YouTube and watch videos there, it's obvious that YouTube knows what videos you are watching. And it's not a bad Thing. The problem starts when we start to stretch this rule of only within a given domain. Think of an ad network. Website owners to make money are incentivized to add adverts from the ad network. Yet those adverts are just an external code. Code that the website owner didn't write. And here is the root of all tracking. No matter if it is an ad, a like button, or a traffic analytics software, this piece of external code, through the clever use of frames, is like a Schrodinger's cat. It is in the domain of the website and in the domain of an ad network at the same time. So now, when you visit a website, you don't only transfer cookies within your browser and that website, you also transfer cookies with the ad network. And the first time you get an ad from that network, you receive a cookie with your ID number. And the ad network meticulously writes down the URL of the page where you stumbled upon that ad. And when you switch from a website about dogs to a website about cars, the ad network already knows that you were previously interested in dogs and will show an ad basing on that knowledge. Of course, they will also write down that you are interested in cars too. With every page that has this external code, the network builds knowledge about you. It builds your profile and it tracks you through the cookie. Even though you never actually logged on to that ad network, it doesn't matter. The ad network doesn't need to know your name. It will build your profile upon what it does know. And that is the history of visited websites. 
Of course, it gets to a completely new level when the external code is provided by the large websites like Facebook or Google, where you do have your account and where your name and last name is known. Then your actions within various websites can be tracked and without a problem connected to your identity. An example is an external code of Facebook Pixel. Once you visit a website, information on that visit is bound with your Facebook account, allowing the website owner to target ads to your wall. The important thing to note here is that the tracking companies do not have a magic pill. They will not assign more data to your session than they have access to. Some companies will only have access to your browsing patterns. Some will have access to data that you provided yourself by setting up an account with them. A cookie here is just a tracker that allows companies to match your browser with a pack of data that they have already collected. And when you delete the cookie or go into a private mode, this match is removed. From now on, you are a completely new person. This is your defense mechanism. After all, you decide when you remove your cookies. If you wanted to, you could remove them daily, weekly, with every restart of the browser. It's up to you. And the ad network will have to start collecting data from scratch. They will have to assign you a new cookie with a new ID and start the game all over again. But what if they didn't have to? What if they were able to somehow survive the deletion of the cookie, taking away your only mechanism of protection? Let's enter the world of browser fingerprinting. Every human has a fingerprint that is unique to that single person. It's located at our fingertips and we take it everywhere we go and live at everything we touch. We can say a pretty similar thing about your browser or device your browser runs on. Whenever your browser opens any website, it provides a lot of information about itself. And it's not designed to break your privacy, but to allow you to have the best experience you can, so that the design of your website matches the exact capabilities of your device. For example, when you visit a website, your browser sends a request to retrieve it from the web server. In that request, it will add information like I am Firefox, I run on Windows, and so on. After that, the browser opens the website and once the website is in the actual window, it can access far more information. Like what's your screen resolution? What's your time zone? A list of all your enabled browser plugins. How many threads does your CPU support? Or even the model of your graphics card. And it's all just scratching the surface of the information available to the web server. You can check what the website knows about your device on a site like Cover Your Tracks. But wait, wait, wait. How does it cause any kind of tracking? This all seems unrelated. Well, remember that a tracking cookie was just a unique piece of text in your browser that was enabling to identify your browser among others. Nothing else, just a piece of text, but assigned exclusively to you. If a tracking company is able to find a different piece of text which is unique and exclusive to you, they will accomplish exactly the same thing without cookies. So let's take it to extreme. Imagine that you are a multimillionaire. You have a custom made car, custom made jet, but that is not enough for you. You go to Nvidia and say, develop a custom made graphics card just for me, no one else, and call it NVIDIA Matt is Awesome 1990. 
From now on, every website that you visit will have an information that you're using the graphics card NVIDIA Matt is Awesome 9090. This is a piece of text unique and exclusive to you. You can delete all your cookies whenever you want, but your graphics card is still the same. And by this piece of text, the name of the graphics card, you will be identified and tracked no matter what you do. You do not have a protection mechanism against it. But let's be real, you will not have a golden custom-made graphics card. So how can tracking companies retrieve a unique text from this exercise? By combining information that is not unique to make it unique. You may be using Windows 11, just like millions of people. You may use Google Chrome, like millions of people. You may be living within your exact time zone. You may have 8 GB of RAM, having the GTX 4060 graphics card, and so on. All of those is done by millions of people. But a group of people that have all of them at once, it is very limited. Add a few other properties of your device and you will have a unique combination. And that combination, usually stored within a hash, is a browser fingerprint. Browser fingerprint either identifies exclusively your browser or narrows it down to a very small subset of people. Let's visualize it. Those are all the people in the world. The tracking company finds out that you use Windows 11. This information narrows it down. You use Pacific Time Zone. You use Firefox. Graphics card the GTX 4060. 16 threads on your CPU and 8 GB of RAM. Gotcha! You don't believe me? Let's check it on the website Cover Your Tracks. It keeps the fingerprints of all people who visited that website in the last 45 days. How many was it in my case? Imagine the biggest stadium in the world. Now add 50% more seats to make it even bigger. Now that imaginary stadium may hold 200,000 people. And according to Cover Your Tracks, among those 200,000 people, my device fingerprint was unique. Which means they can inject a session cookie to my browser, but if they find out I deleted that, they can recognize me anyway and push the cookie back in. Never losing the track of me. The ultimate tracker. Before we go any further, I would like to share something about collecting all those properties used in a browser fingerprint. Some of those properties, like screen resolution, are available by default and there is not much thought put into collecting it. But man, some of them are just purely insane. Note that I will be visualizing them, but of course in real life the user will not be able to see anything. One of the properties used for a browser fingerprint is a list of fonts that are used in the system. You know, with a fresh operating system you have a default set of fonts, but while installing other apps they might come with their own fonts, which they push into your system. So you end up with a certain list of fonts that may add valuable information to your browser fingerprint. But the awesome thing is that by design the browser does not have access to listing your installed fonts. So how does it do it? While rendering your page, any text can have a font assigned to it. But what happens if you do not have that font installed? Well, the web developer might have been prepared for that case and assigned a backup font. In plain English, use the font of Helvetica, but if that is not available, use Comic Sans. But a text written in Helvetica has different dimensions than text written in Comic Sans. So the website, invisibly of course, renders text in all fonts known to mankind, yet always provide a known backup font. 
Then it compares the size of the freshly rendered text element to the size of the backup. If the size is different than the backup font, we know that the font was in fact available on the system of the victim. But if the size matches, we know that the browser rendered a backup font, meaning it was not installed. Do this for all possible fonts and you get a list of installed fonts. Another value to be tracked by. Another ridiculous way of adding additional properties to track is canvas fingerprinting. Not all shapes and graphics that are displayed in your browser were shipped to you as an image. Some of them are drawn on the spot. So the website creates a white canvas and draws a circle on it. At this point, this is not an image, it is a canvas. But the browser can export this canvas as an actual image. It does not need to save it to the disk, it can save it just to the memory of the browser. What is wrong with this? Someone found out that every time a website saves that same image, like a circle on a white background, the output image looks exactly the same. Looks the same, but is not the same. The actual contents of the file can be quickly compared by a hash. Device A will always create the exact same image, both by looks and by the hash of the file. Device B will also always create the exact same image, both by looks and by the hash of the file. But even though the image from the device A and device B looks the same, their hash is different, meaning the contents of the image file were different. So now we have another property to add to browser fingerprinting. The fingerprint of a canvas. It's like a signature of an artist. Add it to every painting. Browser fingerprinting is a problem that remains unsolved, though every major browser developer is working on some kind of solution. Brave is already putting up a fight. Their approach? Inconsistency. Between the restarts of the Brave browser, it very slightly changes just a small number of properties used for fingerprinting. So now they do not reflect the reality. And that introduces some randomness into calculating the browser fingerprint. But keep in mind that Brave changes just a small subset of properties, not all of them. So it just makes it harder. It does not prevent calculating partial fingerprints. And of course, the website can detect that you're using Brave. And with such a low number of users, using Brave is a big fingerprint on its own. But I believe they found a right direction. For the calculation of the browser fingerprint, the more we make the inputs unreliable, the more unreliable the output. Maybe at some point in time, browser fingerprint will be so unreliable that it will be completely useless for tracking us. But sadly, that is not the situation now. It is an open issue and we're all desperately looking forward for a solution. Keep in mind that it's not the first time browsers are facing privacy issues, which are not that easy to fix. The third-party cookies mentioned a lot of times during this video are already scheduled for total discontinuation. It's just Google which planned to block them before the end of 2022, then moved to the end of 2023 and once again to the end of 2024. Another issue dating a way back was when the browsers allowed website owners to leak your browser history. That has been fixed with a very peculiar decision to allow browsers to lie. How? Watch the video right here. As you can see, this is a very small channel and I try to steer the ship towards direction provided by your feedback. So please leave a comment, subscribe, give a thumbs up or even thumbs down. It takes you just a couple of seconds, but lets me know if I'm on the right track. Your voice matters.